right, while the coffee's filtering, I've just got back from two weeks around Scotland and Yorkshire and um, some of Cumbria. But I've had a lot of questions, a lot of comments uh, about my camper van, whether I did it myself, whether I bought it like it, uh, how much I use it, do I find it useful, how I've got a few things set up. So I thought I would just do a, a quick video showing you a few things that I've done and why I've done it and how I've done it. It started off with its own Instagram page of Expedition Base Camper and that's where I've shared pretty much all the images from an empty van or a plumber's van full of rubbish to, I say completed, but you're never completed. There's always, always extra little things that you want to do. We always come back from a holiday with a little kind of short list of things. Um, one of them was, this time was somewhere to put the, the sink cover chopping board when it's not being used. Um, there's always, there's always a few extra things, extra few coat hooks. Um, I've moved where the TV sits. So I'm gonna finish making my coffee and then give you a, a rundown because I called it Expedition Base Camper because for my wildlife photography, it really is a base camp. I've got charging ports, I've got a heater, I've got plenty of storage for all my camera gear. I know what's where. I know that nine times out of 10 when I want it, it's fully charged. Let's make my coffee. Nessie is a 2007 Renault Traffic, or as friends of mine like to call it, the Renault Tragic. Um, I did give her a good clean when we got back from our trip, but she has uh, sat in the rain over the last few days. So she has gotten herself filthy again. She was a plumber's van. She's now done about 170,000 miles. She has had a new engine. So on that engine, it's, um, it's about 10,000 miles. One of the first things I really wanted to do was to put the all-terrain tires on. Now, it wasn't the first thing I did. Didn't do it for a couple of years. Uh, and I really found that on some sites, some grass pitches and some wild camping pitches, that when it was wet and muddy, just a normal commercial tire on a front wheel drive, you get stuck. Now I've always had four wheel drive cars. So I'm always, I've been used to BF Goodridge all terrain for probably the past 15, 16 years. So I went with another set of those. I do a lot of um, dirt tracks and not off-roading, but dirt off-roading in Scotland. Some of the tracks that I've been down there's no way I would take either one, a pristine vehicle that I didn't mind scratching or putting a few dinks and scrapes in. And I certainly wouldn't have done most of them with normal tyres. Which is why I've gone for the BF Goodridge All-Terrain. Now I stuck some trim on the wheel arches just to help with the stone chips because these tyres do pick up a lot of stones. The roof rack was a big thing uh, for me. I I had the awnings from my previous four-wheel drive and I've also got a tent that clips on underneath the awnings that I'll stick a couple of pictures here for you to look at. I wanted perimeter lighting so that is LED uh, 16 watt LED on each corner so when I'm parking up at night or I've got the awnings out and I just want some external lighting or we're in the middle of nowhere and we hear noises outside. Um, it just happened once or twice. I could just floodlight them or anything, any vehicle that was, uh, that was around. And I do feel that I need to sometimes, especially when I'm wild camping in the middle of nowhere. I'll put my coffee down and I'll grab the camera. you can see the perimeter lighting and there is one on each corner. Another thing that I found quite important for the van was the little wind deflectors 
uh, because the wind, wind really whips in on those, not very nice at all. Um, I also installed, there's some LED spotlights behind the grill there and also underneath there you can see that's during the day uh, pretty blinding at night time and there we go there's the perimeter lights as well another another important thing I wanted to install was the side window and everything, everything other than the rear windows, I've uh, installed myself. Extra, extra water, an extra 20 litres. I do have two 15 litre water tanks on board, uh, fresh drinking water, a bag for rubbish. I have a bin inside the van but when that, bin, that bag is full, which it seems to be every two or three days, it means that I can stick them in. I get three waste bin fulls in here. So it gives me the chance to, to carry uh, it around with me for a while. I don't have to worry about what I'm doing with stinky rubbish, etc. The plastic tub here, I'll grab my keys. Right, this is just where I want to keep anything external that, again, it's going to get dirty, levelling the ramps. Um, I've got a, a mat for your feet for the shower, which I shall show you shortly. It's a collapsible bucket and a collapsible um, washing up bowl. If we're doing anything that's bigger than as for when there's anything of a greater volume to wash up that I can't do in the small sink. And also I've got a black dry bag that lives in there and then each day dirty laundry gets put in that bag, tied up and stuck in there. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be waterproof. It's water-ish proof. Um, in fact, it was so watertight when I first put it on and being black plastic, it used to sweat and everything inside there used to get absolutely, uh, absolutely sodden. So I put a, a vent at the front there to help it breathe and stop the rain getting in. And that holds, that's a 50 litre box. Move around to this side, these are recovery boards. Uh, if I get stuck in mud, or stuck even in a field, or I end up down a small ditch because it's full of grass. Happened a few times. I've had nothing major, no major, um, major things go wrong. Like I said, I've owned four wheel drives all my life because so I kind of know what limits of my vehicles are. But that one here, in case I need them or in case I need to help anybody else uh, get out of a sticky situation. This is where my electric shower is. And it's just, uh, it's just um, a little lithium powered pump with all the attachments in. And at the moment it's just kind of wedged in here, but I'm gonna line it. I'm gonna, I might change it so these bits are loose in there, but at the moment, to be honest, it actually works absolutely fine with it like that. I don't really feel the need to particularly change the way that works actually. Now you're quite a far away now, but the other side of this road, but I have a shower cubicle, which just folds out. Um, it folds out like that, like that, and it's a uh, four-sided. Um, and then I use the collapsible bucket, boil out some water, bottom of the bucket, fill it with cold water in the cubicle, the mats that are in the back box, 
um, and you've got about 15, 16 minutes of uh, pump in that electric shower. And to be fair, you can have a shower in about two to three liters of water. You know, you hose yourself down, do your bits, hose yourself back off again. Also have a couple of 120 litre roof boxes, rear opening, and that's where I tend to keep kind of walking boots, wellies. Um, there's a dry bag, which has got a few extra layers in, you know, like an extra kind of a prime loft or down jacket, maybe an extra waterproof as well. And then in that side, I try and keep all my camera gear, um, my ghillie suits, my hides, my bed rolls, um, anything that's too bulky to put in the van really. Reverse camera, something else that I found quite important. And I've also put a, um, an LED reversing spotlight in. And I think the last thing externally that you'll see on top is the 150 watt Renergy solar panel, which I installed a couple of years ago as I have two 130 amp leisure batteries that run everything. The main draw on it really is the, is the fridge, which you'll get to see in a minute. But other than that, externally, I think that's it so far. Let's have a quick look on the inside. Right, when I'm away on my own, the carry, my camera bag tends to live on the passenger seat, which I changed. It used to be a big bench seat, um, but I've changed it to a single seat and I've just put in some bit of box storage, bit of a cubby storage there, somewhere to put my uh, drinking cup, usually my sippy, have a Stanley sippy cup which normally sits in there and this is where I've uh, installed the little 12 litre fridge. Up on the windscreen I have up here that's a tyre pressure monitoring system lets me know what my pressures are and my temperatures are. I then just got my um, Garmin um, satellite navigation then my reverse camera, my CB radio, and I took the stereo that was out of here, that was in here, and I've installed my original, just cheap head unit. And then I've got switches for my reverse camera, switches for the roof lights, the perimeter lights of each corner, and a switch for my zombie lights. My reverse light comes on automatically when I put it into reverse gear. I have a split, charge battery system so that keeps my starter battery charged first and then once that's fully charged it reverts to my two auxiliary batteries and keeps them topped up the solar panel also keeps everything topped up it tops up my leisure batteries and then that top keeps my starter battery in tip top condition I put an armrest in because the angle of these doors, as you can see on the other side, possibly, um, they're very slanted and I wanted to have somewhere I could rest my elbow whilst I'm driving. A couple of storage pouches, sunglasses, binoculars, because you wouldn't believe the amount of times you need to pull over when you're in Scotland because something is exciting, flying around or other mammals of wildlife. Uh, a few tools, shovel in case I need to dig myself out or if I'm digging a hole to um, for the other reasons you dig holes for and then a fire extinguisher that's either for myself to use or to get someone else out of trouble and an LED torch just mounted to the uh, A pillar and I think that's it in the front let's head into the back Again, mainly 
I wanted extra storage. So I keep my chemicals for the Kemlu wash, um, uh, washing machine uh, liquid for when we need to get our laundry done and some extra gas bottles for the gas hob. And that used to be open uh, like that, but it's much nicer now that uh, a month or two ago I filled it in with some canvas. And then on this side we have the same sort of thing but this one was purely done for extra shoes a pair of trainers a pair of crocs etc and again i just thought it was nicer to have it covered doesn't take long to do right rear drawers we've got some lighting that comes on night time that helps me look inside the cupboards and then this side is kind of my mechanic side I guess I've got funnels and torque spanners recovery straps high vis tire punch and repair kits um, warning hazards some straps oils etc I keep in there This side it's extra gas hob so if there's meals where we want to do um, you know we're doing a chili and we want to do rice at the same time it means that we can we can pull it out we can we can put it on the worktop or we can put it on the little um, fold out table on the side and then the main big drawer which is on 100 kilo sliders this is where I keep my second uh, water bottle, drinking water bottle, 15 litres. And I keep my quick grab um, photography stuff, a couple of extra more bottles, some fire lighters, um, stool, little folding camp table, some of my camouflage stuff. But usually it gets a lot more in there when I'm actually getting ready to go away. Usually there's an extra couple of layers, etc., in there close these and this is a just a pop-up table which I use all the time and now it has my sink cutting board stored there when it's not being used right stainless steel sink the wastewater goes in the bottom of that cupboard happens to also be where I keep all my switches and my charging systems. I've got three rows of lights and then a set for the bedroom lamps and then my battery gauge monitor here. You can see it's at 100% because the sun is keeping it completely topped up today. And I've got a couple of charging points at the moment. It's charging up one of my camera batteries. And I've also got a charger there for my GoPro and I just flick between the two, whatever I'm charging. Gas hob, I think we've all seen this probably a few times. I made the gap underneath so that I would have to flip the top over to close it because it's too easy to leave it on when it's that way up but this way you have to unlock it and turn that over to fit in so I know I can't put it away without shutting it all off and that's just a little extra safety um, safety point for me so it was quite nice it was just a quick idea to keeping that concealed um, some hammered copper I got into a real kind of fit with all this hammered copper in here I think it looked quite nice with the timber and the black iron so uh, underneath here that's the other water tank that's being used at the moment keep the washing up liquid and the one of the batteries is behind here and 
one of the little coppery, that's uh, antibacterial hand wash and just some of my business cards. Some more drawers. It's got all our cutlery, fry light papers, etc. in that in it, and that slides around so it just means that it gives you more scope. Food pantry. Slide out just because it gives you greater um, access to it all. And there's a little shelf at the back there. Socket. And that's where I keep my bin. Um, the lid was made from an old bowl, but there's plenty of pictures on the Instagram page of Expedition Base Camper. And a little kind of kitchenette area. I was very aware of space being used so it's not very deep, it's only um, nine and a half inches deep, this side of the unit. And there's a slight angle on it also. I just wanted to make the most of any space that we had. Just some extra storage, kitchen roll holder, rest of it's explanatory. And then another drawer, just for putting all our knickknacks. Paddy about give a dog a bone. And just some wicker storage for things. I think this one is our first aid, tablets, etc. Diesel heater outlet, toilet roll. Just the extra storage, which I think it's got some kitchen roll in the hoover and some spare coffees in. Just a pull out clothes drawer. There was two of those, but one of them has now been converted into that. I say bathroom, but I just mean the toilet which is kept in that cupboard and that just pulls out you can do what you got to do and then and then just push it back in there it's a proper snug fit i made it a perfect fit on purpose so that it doesn't bang around and then this end this is all our kitchen stuff Ridge Monkey, do a lot of cooking in the Ridge Monkeys. If you've never seen one or never heard of them, look them up, they're fantastic for camping. You can use them as like a little mini oven. Uh, if you're cooking bacon or sausages or anything like that that gets spitty and, and spatty, then it, it encloses it completely. Check them out, they're amazing. And then just an extra little cubby hole that I keep on my pegs for my awnings, etc. in. And then, moving up, we've got two-way, put some lights on, see if it helps. There we go, it does. Two-way radios um, that are rechargeable, so they've always kept on charge, so that if I'm in an area with the wife and she is going to stay with the van while I'm off photographing, there's a lot of times where there is zero reception. And these are good for, I think, two and a half miles. So usually nine times out of 10, I'm photographing local to the camper van anyway. Just a little selection of books that I use all the time. Tree identification, that's more from the days of when I was a tree surgeon. But it is interesting to know food for free, some wild foods, things to see on the seashore. Wild animals, little book. I mean, these are great little, little books, these, um, these Colin Gens are pocket sized and the birdie one I use all the time for my photography. It lives in my uh, chest rig. This unit, I mean, I've always got, I've got some hooks up there. It was hanging for extra coats, but I often find space wise, I just hang extra stuff up there. Bit of storage on top, made it with some copper tube, a couple of wicker, uh, wicker tubs. Then a little bookshelf. That's usually full up of books when we go away. I've got quite a few books um, on areas, subject matter, places to go, etc. that we take with us, but um, they're obviously back indoors for when I'm doing my research. And a coat hook in the corner, which we used to just hold our coats out the way. Seems to be very handy, especially when you're driving and traveling. 
bedside corner. Got a couple of charging ports, um, 2.1 amps on both. Uh, just somewhere to stick my little torch, uh, face mask in case I need it, a couple of hooks, um, bedside lamp that's on a little switch. And then just some storage, got some bird seed and food, etc. And it's just somewhere to put a little bit of extra storage. Um, a lamp on that side with some uh, USB powers. Uh, padded headboard to the wife installed. And then, and then the bed. We've got a, a canvas rear window cover that comes down. And I have got one that covers down, down here where the bulk head was. Sometimes when I'm camping at night and I've got my camera bag in the front, I like to put in the window covers that cover around the front. Uh, especially if it's a hot day as well, you can put the reflect inside out, keeps it much cooler inside, stops prying eyes looking in. Behind the seat is where I keep the reflective window covers and also is where all my nice tidy electrics are and my power inverter. And then last but not least, the fridge centre console. It's just a little 11 litre, 12 litres, something like that. Um, so that's the biggest drawer of my auxiliary batteries. But it's nice, it gives you somewhere to keep some milk, some marge and your beers. That's pretty much it, that's what it needs to carry really. And that's where my Kindle sits at night when I want to watch a, a movie. It's nice not being too close to the bed. And even if I want to watch something and I'm sitting down here, it means I can still sit and watch anything. But nine times out of 10, I'm looking outwards if I'm sat here during the day. Well, I think that's covered everything, pretty much. Yeah, if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer anything that you can think of, if I can help in any shape or form. Like I said, I've had it since 2018. So I bought it before the mad rush of 2020 and 2021. So I bought it at a very good price and things have just slowly evolved. It was very basic to start with, as I'm hoping that I've flicked up loads of images of the build whilst I've been doing this video. There's always extra things I want to do, and I'm gonna do. I didn't have a sink to start with. I just used to use the collapsible bowl. I didn't have water pump with a tap. It was just, I poured it out when I wanted it. It was very much like a dry, warm version of just camping, um, which is kind of what I wanted. But um, one, the older you get, the more kind of ease you want of it. Um, and two, because I enjoy building and and uh, and mucking around with with the van it also it's, it's when you start using it a lot which i've used it a lot even my day trips uh, like today i'm out photographing the buzzer today and it gives me an opportunity to stop have proper lunch if i've got editing to do i'll often sit in the van like where i am today you've probably seen from the drone footage that i'm you know i'm kind of in a back roads if I'm going to sit and edit, there's no point sitting at home at a desk. I might as well be sat here uh, amongst nature. It's a damn sight less stressful um, and more focusing, if I'm honest. Well, I hope you found some interest um, to this video. I know it's not a wildlife video. I probably class this as one of my biggest tools and equipment that enables me to go out uh, wildlife photographing. A lot of the places, a lot of the, the photos that I've managed to get is because I've managed to just park out in the middle of nowhere in Scotland and I haven't got to worry about getting back to a hotel or a B&B or a, putting up a tent when it's raining or when it's freezing. I mean, I've been away in January, had the diesel heater on low, left it on um, till about one in the morning, um, left the window open, left the side window open, left the front windows open, get a bit of circulation and I was really snug, sat and watched the film. So, real comfort, and it's not cost me a great deal to build either. But like I said, it's opened up my options, and I've travelled further and wider than I ever had previously because of having the camper. I've been able to do sunrise uh, and sunset shoots, knowing that all I've got to do is go back to the van and make some food and have a sleep. Or I want to do sunrise and sunset when it comes to certain wildlife. 
So I've been able to be up at two, three in the morning, do my sunrise, come back to the van, have breakfast, sleep um, for four or five hours, and then get up kind of mid-afternoon, um, and then get out for the late summer evening photo shoots and finish at 10, 11 o'clock at night. I've recently set up a Patreon page uh, as a few people have asked me how they can support me. Um, so on top of clicking the like, subscribe, um, and all that good stuff, it now gives you uh, an opportunity, if you'd like to, to help fund my travels away. So until next time, thanks for watching, take care.